Big win for 19 Miami at Florida, 41 to 17. And they were highlighted by Cam Ward, 26 to 35, 385 yards, three touchdowns, 33 yards rushing. And uh, I believe two guys on the podcast, I think we said Miami was going to beat Florida, oh. win the ACC. Oh. Um, I had Cam Ward in Heisman contention, but I think you had him as a Heisman winner. The winner. Huh. Crazy. Oh, Crazy. Interesting. Crazy. Um, it's we got to start out with we yeah we have to anytime there's a quarterback that has a highlight like this and that is the focal point and them winning the football game I got to throw it to you talk me Cam Ward what'd you see what'd you like interception terrible but the dude bounced back the guy's locked in this guy he, so much aura aura is the new popular word that the kids Indeed, are right now. yeah this dude has infinite aura after that game yeah I think. Th- First of all, Cam Ward, thank you so much for proving us right. Appreciate it. That was great. That was absolutely great. Um, and for dominating Florida, the Florida Gators in what we call now Canesville, not Gainesville. It's Canesville. Thank you, social media, for that one. Love that. Um, you said it yourself, 26 to 35, 385 yards, three touchdowns. The interception that he threw, I was very irritated when he threw it. Like, I literally was, like, watching it and yelled, and my kids came in and checked it on me. Like, is everything okay, Dad? It's like, no, get out. (laughs) (laughs) But other than that, I thought that he showed exactly what it is that we thought. He's an experienced quarterback who's played a ton of football at the highest level, and now you put better athletes around him with a better defense, a better scheme, Cam Ward is about to have a ridiculous season in the ACC, especially because there's not going to be a ton of defenses that are as good as Florida's, and he just carved them up for 385 yards and three touchdowns. So, and, like, the pick that he threw was just – it was not – because, you know, sometimes people talk about, like, oh, it was great coverage. He missed – a, an open receiver and there was a safety lurking behind it that just yeah, it was like late late across the middle too right like it like it wasn't a great play by the defender like and that's not a shot it's just you made the play when it came your way it's just cam ward other than that throw was lights out i think he might have had the throw of the day like no disrespect to kate klubnik but when he rolled to his left and threw a ball like 40 yards into the back of the end zone to the receiver coming across the back of the end zone for the toe tap, that throw was ridiculous. Hmm. And like, it was almost like that. Like when you look at like early Heisman, you know, how people always talking hyperbole, early Heisman moments, like that to me was Cam Ward's early Heisman moment. You might look back and be a part of his highlight package when he's in New York for the Heisman Trophy celebration. Yeah. And I think people should not downplay this as a big, as, as people should not downplay this win for Miami. Tough environment. Florida's got talent. It's just they're not well coached, which we'll get into in a bit. They've got right. four or five stars. They've recruited well in the sport for a while. But for Cam Ward to go in there, the swagger he had, the the moxie he had, I mean, the little jog out of bounds. Like, he was jogging from, like, eight yards out of bounds yeah. and kind of looking at people. Like, dude, that stuff, which I'm sure, guy, you fire, that stuff gets me so fired up. I'm like, oh, my gosh. The Miami swag, the Miami moxie, the late hits, like – Number 41 comes unblocked the defensive end for Miami and bats the pass and kind of shoves Graham Mertz and then yeah. runs after the ball in the end zone. Like this team has motor, just like Notre Dame. It felt like the speed, they, they never went down in speed. They never got tired for Miami. And I think that's kudos to Mario Cristobal. That's kudos to Aaron Feld, their weight, weight training. They've got one of the best weight training conditioning staffs. And say what you want to say about Mario Cristobal when it comes to game managing. I, I think he kind of took a step back. And said, hey, I want to let my OCs, I want to let my quarterback, I want to let my defense do the work, and I'm just going to sit back and just kind of observe, which, to be honest, that's what he's good at. But I think he's also good with the culture and building a program. My second thing is, for people out there saying, um, Cam Ward, like, oh, my God, 385 yards, three touchdowns. Like, dude, he's been doing that at Wazoo for the last three years. And that's one thing, too, I think that's great about the transfer portal is you're able to get guys in lower markets, which, by the way, he played in the Pac-12, too. People are like, oh, he's, it's a loud environment in the swamp. Like, dude, he played at Autzen Stadium, played at Washington every year. Like, dude's been playing in, in hostile environments. But you're right. Yeah. It's just been poor talent. Now you get great talent. Now you've got a great running back duo with Fletcher and Martinez. Like, I think the sky's the limit. Transition well going from the Pac-12 to the SEC. Like, I just I, I think people underestimate like 
like, oh, Wazoo, like people just think in their minds, like Wazoo's an undervalued program. Like they're kind of like a group of five team, like talent wise, maybe, but dude played against some of the best talent in the country, Absolutely. especially last year in the Pac-12. He balled out. You wonder Wazoo, like had that fluke game in the mid season, but Cam Ward's been that guy. And I'm just happy that he's getting this opportunity to flourish. And I mean, if he continues to play like this, like what top five pick first round pick next year. He's going to get drafted. We know that. Uh, what I will say, too, cool little fun fact. Cam Ward, starting quarterback, went to Wazoo. Mish Powell, DB, formerly of University of Washington, had a big interception, almost ran it back against Florida. So a little Wazoo, UW. Uh, it'll be interesting to see maybe around the Apple Cup if maybe they take a little wager on who's going to win uh, in week three and just see if maybe they can like do like a little friendly wager between the two of them. That's funny. Um, I was going to say one more thing about Cam Ward. I totally forgot, but um, let's talk about these wide receivers. I, that's one thing, too, that I mentioned was Cam Ward's connections with these wide receivers. It felt like they've been playing ball for four to five years. And I think that's a testament to Xavier Restboro, Res um, the leading wide Restrepo. receiver last yeah. year, staying and gelling with Cam Ward. I mean, he looked phenomenal. Seven catches, 112 yards, one touchdown. Braxton Berrios, 2.0. I mean, this dude, every time the ball is thrown his way, made some tough catches. Jacoby George had a touchdown, too, made some good catches, too. But you saw the wide receiver talent. I was impressed, the depth by them. And then also, going back a little bit, there's a reason why people were going after Cam Ward in the transfer portal. There's a reason why he was the number one quarterback. And for him to bail out in the draft and for him to weigh out his options and go to Miami, I mean – Shout out to him for doing that and shout out to him for, you know, boosting up his stock. And I think these wide receivers are pretty damn happy to have him alongside. I, I just, I, this offense just to me against a, a D line that had a lot of big guys. I mean, the, the Miami, Miami is so back. Miami is a hundred percent back. There's no doubt about it. I wonder how Ohio state's feeling right now for not pursuing Dude. Ken Ward. <laughs> People texting me like, "Oh yeah, Will Howard." I think Colin Coward tweeted about it. Like, "Oh yeah, Will Howard's gonna be good." What a good it up. Like, dude! It's Akron. It's right. Akron. Like, come on, man. Like, uh, I don't know. Cam, Cam Ward, Will Howard. Let's just be very clear about this. Like, and that's Cam not a Ward, shot. That was the most pressure of the season. Like, you lose that game. A lot of pressure moving forward. Like, Florida State looking at them for the rest of the season. They're on pins and needles. Hostile environment of Florida. Like both. Both coaches know, like, I need this win. Like, Marcus yep. Will is like, I need this win personally to propel the rest of the season. And then you got freaking Will Howard doing it against Akron, and people were praising Will Howard. It's like, dude, like, you're at home, and it's against Akron. Like, relax. <laughs> yeah. Relax. No, I think, I think honestly, like, one of my biggest takeaways for the, for the Gators is, like, guys, like, Graham Mertz. What are we doing, man? What are we doing? You, hey, you, hey, you called that too, man. You said, I think DJ Lagway is going to slip his way in there. And I was yeah. shocked they pulled him that late. Didn't you think that was a little late? They should have pulled yeah, him early. I, like, I feel like if you're going to make that change, maybe you wait till week two. If you're going to, like, if you're going to do it that late, I would rather just wait until week two to do the change. Um, but I did, as you said, I said it in the, in the preview episode. I literally said, DJ Lagway is going to play. And he's going to play substantial minutes for this football team because I don't think that Graham Mertz is that guy. No disrespect again to Graham Mertz. It's just there's a reason why DJ Lagway was the like the highest rated quarterback recruit to go to Florida in a while. And he did it because if you think about it, DJ Lagway did it at some of the highest levels of high school football in the state of Texas. He had ridiculous numbers. And I'm not saying that high school translates to SEC. What I am saying is, is that he's played in big football games already so he's not going to be afraid of the moment he's not going to be nervous he's already going to be prepared to play against high level competition based on where he came from in high school and i think that kids coming into college are already going to be more prepared than they have been uh obviously with the seven on seven circuits camps that people can go to the the intense individual training that they get um it's just dj lagway is just simply better than graham mertz right now and i think it's going to show I think part of that, too, the offensive line from Florida struggled during that game. The defensive yes. line from Miami obliterated them. Three sacks, eight tackles for losses, five pass deflections, and two interceptions, too. But um, I, th I think this Florida team, look, one of the – it's going to be a brutal season again for Florida. I yeah. mean, you look tough at their schedule. schedule tough tough schedule, schedule. Home against a and They got at Tennessee, home against Georgia, at Texas, um, LSU, Ole Miss, and they've got Florida State on their schedule, too. But mm. more importantly – <laughs> um, there was a there was a tweet that yeah, dude, isn't that a that's so tough? There was a tweet that came out um talking about Dan Mullen 
and talking about how Florida made a made a bad decision uh, by firing him and pulling up Billy Napier. And I kind of want to put these stats real quick. Um, Go ahead. Dan Mullen, first three years at Florida, three consecutive New Year's six games. Um, they went ten and three, eleven and two, eight and four, and then they went five and six, and they booted him. And this is the guy that's been coaching, head coaching since two thousand nine. He's had better experience. Kind of a puzzling move there. Okay, you go to Billy Napier. Okay, well he uh, his best season was eleven and three, twelve and one at Louisiana Lafayette. You just sign him six seven five and seven zero oh, and one. But more importantly. Billy Napier's stats against ranked teams, against ranked, ranked teams that finish ranked in the end of the season, two and nine. Billy Napier in Florida has lost six consecutive games. Their last home game they won was October 7, 2023. And Florida is one in 10 versus rival teams under Billy Napier. So I ask you, Cody, how long until Billy Napier gets the snap? We've been saying this guy's on the hot seat for a while. And if so, hot take. DJ Lagway, does he hit the portal? Because, I mean, I, I I think this guy, depending on what he loves at Florida, depending on who they bring back in, this could be one of the hottest names in the transfer portal if he does leave, if Napier exits. Does Billy Napier play DJ Lagway to save his job? I don't know. Ooh. Like, you know, I, and that's, and that's one of the things, right? Like, does he play DJ Lagway with the hopes that DJ Lagway can kind of inspire this group to play at a higher level than they have been playing over the last couple of years? So... Um, no, I think the seat is hotter than hot. I think they're in Gainesville or as we just said, Canesville. And, <laughs> and, uh, I think that, uh, Billy Napier, like better get a couple wins here in the next couple weeks, or I wouldn't be surprised if we see a mid season change interim type of situation, kind of similar to what they've done in the past with other, with other programs. Yeah. They look super undisciplined. And I think my last takeaway from this Florida team is, um, pray, it's going to be a long season. I just It sucks because it's such a great environment, and they have so many good home games this season, so you wonder if they're going to show out regardless. But, um, yeah, it's only a matter of time until Billy Napier leaves. On the other side of things, shout-out to Cam McCormick, nine-yard touchdown, nine-year senior. He's like 26 years old. And I think people are kind of trashing him, I guess, for being in college for that long. But, dude, he had like four or five years consecutive when he was hurt. Season-ending. Yeah, season, season ending. ending injury. So I don't mind him and with the power of NIL for him to be able to make money and still kind of live his dream and play college football. I think it's all kudos to him and love seeing Cam McCormick and I love seeing uh Riley Williams get in the mix too, a guy that we saw in high school play some tight end for Miami. So love Shout what I'm seeing from Miami. Williams. Damian yeah. Martinez wasn't a factor much. I mean, again, did running game when the passing game's there, throw the damn ball over the yard. 65 rushing yards. I do expect him to have a breakout game soon, but um, closing thoughts, Miami, Florida, and then we'll move on to Penn State, West Virginia. Yeah, I think Miami, like you said, is is back. I think Miami is set up to have a great run in the ACC, and I think that Florida, unfortunately, strap in. It's going to be one of those tough seasons. 